The Prophet, Chapter 1 The Prophet Malachi, Chapter 1, Verse 1 <coughs> The Burden of the Word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi I have loved you, says the Lord, yet you say, In what way have you loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, says the Lord? Yet Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated, and laid waste his mountains and his heritage for the jackals of the wilderness. Even though Edom has said, We have been impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places, thus says the Lord of hosts. They may build, but I will throw down. They shall be called the territory of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord will have indignation forever. Your eyes shall see, and you shall say, The Lord is magnified beyond the border of Israel. Amen. So God expresses His intention, but also His divine emotions, which come only from righteousness, His righteousness, but also the truth of His Word. Abraham, a man of God, truly provoked the admiration of God for his faith and he also earned the greatest and most honorable promises since God revealed to him through a holy presence by telling him and blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply your descendants and furthermore as the faith of Abraham was accounted unto righteousness he promised him that in your seed all the nations of the world will be blessed. But God assures us and reveals to us that Abraham had two children. He had Ishmael, for starters, with Hagar, but also Isaac, who Isaac was the child of promise. He was the result of the promise of God. <clears throat> and that's why the blessing of God from Abraham was passed down to Isaac, but who had children with Rebekah, who was bar barren, and after, after the, uh, the action of God, he, she conceived and had two children, twins, Esau and Jacob. Esau was firstborn. All the blessings of God and the promises of God had been planned for the firstborn, Esau. But God surpasses the typical thing that he even has put in place, even the law which he has set in place, because that for which God cares about is what man will do. Besides, our Lord Jesus Christ has informed us and assured us that not he who says, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who hears and does the will of my Father. Now, because he is God, who knows all things, the past, the present, and the future, because he is a true God, and for God there is no ignorance of the past, nor the present, nor the future. He knows everything. For, for him all things are an eternal present, so his calling is based on his foreknowing, his foreknowledge, the prophetic word which he has for every person. And since God doesn't wait to see what man will do so that he may, God may intervene and bless him, but before man comes, God knows what he's going to do. And so he has foreknowledge and an intention. So before Esau was born, God testified to his mother Rebekah that the youngest, the older, will serve the younger. Which means that the older won't stand 
And for that reason, he will not win the promises and the oracles of God. Indeed, Esau's behavior was so tragic that God expressed this thing that he rarely expresses, that I hated Esau, but Jacob I have loved. Esau was a reliable person. He was not reliable, he was a, a worthy person. He, was, he worked, he had a great strength. He, was, uh, had a, he had abilities, he had skills that theoretically God could do a very important work through this man. But he had a very serious fault in his heart and in his desires and in his ambitions. A very serious problem. And the serious problem was that he walked by sight and he desired and strove to do the de fulfill the desires of the flesh and of his heart with the certainty and arrogance of the spirit. <coughs> the result was he had cast all his uh, attempt and his powers upon what he liked, but he also li his father liked it, like chasing and his uh, work upon the earth without turning his eyes to the spiritual things and the word of God or the fear of God. And so, one day, completely weak from all the, the labor and the hunting, he came home and this tremendous thing occurred, which is possibly unique to be found in the Bible. This man who had the birthrights by the promise of God sold them for a plate of lentils. He despised the birthrights, and for that reason, God called him in the New Testament a fornicator, adulterer. But at the same time, he chose this world and this life, and for that reason, God called him abominable. So a person who is abominable and an adulterer, a fornicator... He provoked the anger of God, rightfully, as we can say, in comparison to Jacob, who was small and insignificant. But because he strove in spiritual things, he cared about his father, the words of his father, his grandfather. He was in God's intentions and in God's fear. So that he bought the birthrights, but at the same time God chose him, even though he had all these weaknesses, even though he was a man of his mother, I'd call him, but God has the ability to train him, to make him a man of faith. And after 20 years, under the heavy training of Laban, Jacob returned, and he was named by God Israel, which means the power of God. Because God has a way these natural abilities he has the ability to create natural abilities and and establish them but God doesn't have any chance to change the intention of man's heart if man doesn't desire it as well so this way my dear brethren the land of Israel was created the land of Jacob the people of Israel and the people of Jacob not Esau's people so the work of God, the word of God was fulfilled, the promises of God. And then a people was created that was redeemed by God, completely separated from all nations. He isn't a people of the nations, but it is a people that God has created from the faith of Abraham, even of Isaac and Jacob. But God, having rejected Esau, because of his heart, he reveals to us through his word that he doesn't hesitate to reject anyone. <coughs> Depending on the intention of his heart and of his works, like Saul, he rejected Saul. So when God rejects or God chooses, 
based on his righteousness and the intention of the heart of man and com- uh, compared to his work, then the consequences are very serious. The person that God rejects because man first rejected God and spiritual things, the spiritual life, and he chose the human, earthly, and carnal life, God says to him, I have hated you. And the result is, I have made the pla- your dwelling place a desolation. And your heritage a city of wilderness. So when man chooses... By rejecting God. Rejecting the fear of God. The word of God. Spiritual things. The heavenly things. The unshakable things. When he rejects the eternal things. And he, cha- it, and he chooses to serve the shakable things. To live by them and for them. And he chooses the temporary things. Then in his life further down. There will be desolation and destruction. There will be a wilderness and there will be loneliness. It is a spiritual law that is unbreakable. For that reason God says, My son, give me your heart. Keep your heart with all diligence, he says elsewhere, because out of it come forth all the issues of your life. Out of our heart, therefore, it depends what our future will be. From our desires, from our thoughts, and with one word, from our intentions. Desolation and wilderness. Destruction and loneliness. If the, our intention is to reject the will of God, the word of God, the heavenlies and the eternal things, by choosing the earthly things, the shakeable things, by choosing vanity. And this choice is apparent, my brethren. You can tell what you choose. If you choose the eternal things, then even your apparel will be modest. With godliness, your words will be as if you're speaking the words of God. Your walk, your course, and there where you're planning on going will be in the presence of God. And when you sleep even, you will be in the presence of God. And when you wake up, you will be in the presence of God. Because the fear of God will reign in your life because you have chosen the eternal things. On the contrary, the person who chooses vanity, shakeable things, and earthly things, his, his outward appearance shows what his life is, and his, his testimony, his witness, his His reputation goes before his works, but also his presence radiates a fragrance of death. Fragrance of sin. A fragrance of perdition. And nobody can say that I don't know in what position I am. Every one of us knows... Absolutely, because the spirit of man knows the depths of man. Esau knew this, but he tried to earn the blessing, even though he rejected God, he despised the birthrights, and of course he didn't succeed in the end. And when he repented, it was too late. And when he wept bitterly, it was too late. It was over. The work of God, the plan of God was over. His life was over. 
Jacob made many mistakes. Many mistakes. He fell. He committed sins. But he had one nice characteristic. When he saw desolation coming and wilderness to his life, he returned to God. At least he had this thing. Israel had this thing. When God blessed him, he left toward vanity again. When he was destroyed, again he returned to God. He knew that God is the one who is able to deliver him. Esau, though, on the contrary, when desolation would come toward him, he immediately said, everything has fallen apart. Well, I will rebuild it again. I will rebuild it again. And God said, you will build it again and I will destroy it again. I will build it again and I will destroy it again. But Israel had a different spirit, Jacob. But also the people of Israel had a different spirit. At least, in their difficulty, they lifted up their eyes toward God and said, We have sinned. We have committed what was wicked before you. Desolation has come, but now you can deliver us and bless us. And God, being good and kind, always delivered them. This is the love of God. The hatred of God is, you will build and I will destroy. And this is the message today. And the love of God is, you will destroy and I will rebuild. How nice this thing is. I really liked it when I... When I because I love you, when you will destroy... I will come and build. When you will ruin, I will come and repair. When you will fail, I will come and give you success. Because I have loved you with everlasting love. And I have loved you not because you have beautiful eyes. Not because you're a good good person. Nor because you work a lot. I have loved you because your intention in your heart never rejected the fear of God, the word of the Lord, and the kingdom of heaven. You may have denied my name. You may have broken my word. You may have made mistakes one after the other. But I see in your heart there is a spark of truth, of love, and of hope. I see a spark of sincerity and a smoking flax. That's enough for me. Esau's uh, flask went out and never smoked again. God never lit it back again. But a quenched flax, a smoking flax, I will not let it go out. I will light it up again. And this is what God is. This is God's personality. And this is God's love. Have you made a mistake? I will repair it. Did you destroy everything? Bring down everything? Don't worry. I'll build it again. Because my dear brethren, our Lord isn't a little Jesus or a, 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 a little God. He is the Lord of hosts. And that's why the Bible says, whoever hopes upon him will not be put to shame. No matter what has happened, no matter what has occurred, have you lost your faith? Maybe so. Have you lost your love? Maybe so. Have you lost your prayer? Maybe so. Have you lost your sanctification, your holiness? Maybe so. Have you lost everything? It could be so. But if there is a smoke of hope coming of, from you, then God says, whoever hopes upon me will not be put to shame. So the crucial point is not what God does, but to whom does God do what? To Esau, <coughs> who has strength, 
who has abilities, who is a, a, a big, a courageous lad who has confidence in himself. He's worthy of a man. You will build and I will destroy, God says. You will return and start to build again and repair. And as soon as you build it again, I will bring it down to the ground. Why? Because you have despised the birthrights permanently. You didn't lose these things. You sold them. You didn't lose the birthrights. They didn't steal your birthrights. You sold them. You despised them. But Jacob, he won the love of God. He's small and significant. But God was with him. Did he make mistakes? He did many mistakes. But in his mistakes, have we made mistakes, my brethren? Whoever's made mistakes, let him lift up his hands. Whoever hasn't made mistakes, let him lift up his hand. Nobody. Wow. Haven't you made mistakes? We've made mistakes, all of us. But God says, many mistakes, many mistakes. I can correct all these mistakes. And He gives us something more. If you make more mistakes, I will correct those too. But be careful. Not with a wicked heart of unbelief. Not with the intention to make mistakes and then say God will correct it. But just like when we cut the bread. Has anyone cut his finger when they're cutting bread? I've cut my hand. When I was cutting bread, I cut my fingers. Oh, it hurt. I have to do something about it. We sewed it. Put it back together again. It was good. Next time I was more careful and I didn't cut my hand again. I cut it. The doctor corrected it. I was careful. And I didn't need to cut it again. Nor did I need the doctor again. But even if I cut it again by mistake, the, doc the doctor would fix it. This is what Christ is. This is who Christ is. He is ready to correct and to restore every mistake and every rumble. All rumble. Why? He has loved us with everlasting love. And how do we know that he's loved us? Because he sent his son. Yes, but I know that he loves me. How do I know that he loves me? The fact that you are here, it means that the Father has loved you and Christ has added you to his church. And I'm sure about this. I'm sure that all of you and all of us, all of us and me, God loves us. Christ loves us with everlasting love. <coughs> God doesn't turn back. When he says, I love you, he means I love you. And when he loves us, he is ready to correct everything when we call upon Him and say, Lord, I made a mistake. I fell. I sinned. I slipped. Forgive me, I won't do it again. And you know, brethren, God comes with joy into our life. There's much joy in heaven and all of heaven. Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, angels, archangels, Cherubim, seraphim, for one sinner who repents and returns to God. For one sinner. <coughs> How much more, my dear brethren, for his whole church. My brethren, can I tell you something? We are blessed. We are, we are lucky if we can say this. That he's, Christ has added us to his church. Because we have a verified love, his verified love. And His care is verified for us. Our Father, because we've accepted Christ, takes care of us. And Jesus Christ teaches us, directs us, saves us, has mercy upon us. And He is a prepared help in our life. And the Holy Spirit comes and gives us its power. We are lucky. We are blessed. We are blessed. Not because we're good. But because we know one name. Jesus Christ, save me. Amen.